on June 16th, 2014, we will officially mark 70 years since 14-year-old George Junius Stinney Jr. Was, execute, was executed by the fascist state of South Carolina. In 1944, Stinney was arrested, quite literally mock trial, mock tried, because essentially what his whole trial was was a mock trial, and and falsely convicted, and falsely executed by this fascist state of that time. Stinney was accused of murdering two young white girls and without even a th shred of physical evidence that he, to prove that he killed those girls, he was still executed. Because this was not any sort of crime that was just going to go unpunished. They were looking for a reason to kill a, a black boy. That's exactly what happens in the South during this time. This is still what happens in the South even to this day. People being tried and convicted falsely of killing people they did not commit. One of the uh, examples is Troy Davis, who was executed a couple years ago in Georgia. He was, com he was co falsely convicted for the murder of a white cop in Georgia. And despite appeals that went all the way to the fucking Supreme Court the state of Georgia still executed him. This is what happens when white supremacist America continues to basically deny the rights of minorities. And this was a perfect example. This is actually a perfect example from history that still even exists today. Stinney was basic, may have been decades younger than Troy Davis, but he was falsely convicted of a crime he did not commit. That is why in October 25th of 2013, there has been people that have come forth to actually call upon the state to pardon Stinney 70 years after he was executed. And if that goes through, which I don't believe it won't, still given South Carolina's just brutally racist nature, even if it was to go through, what will that really solve? Sure, the family of Stinney may, may essentially get some sort of relief, but obviously they're not going to get any compensation. They're not going to, they can't be, you know, time and a simple apology like that cannot heal the wounds and the just the cruel and unusual nature. Of our of our nation's past and of the southern and of the South's just inherent fascist nature, it really just is something that we should think about coming upon the 70th anniversary of this young child's death. Because let's just put it bluntly to the state of South Carolina: the blood of an innocent child was spilled on June 16, 1944 and it was spilled on the hands of the state of South Carolina and on the city of Columbia. Your fascist nature and your racist past will come back to haunt you, and you will all burn in hell if hell exists. And quite frankly, I could just absolutely not be happier for the torture that you will inherently have to live with for the murder of this young child. You should be fucking ashamed of yourself. I know that was... You know, some people say, well, that was the past and that just how things were. Yes, that may have been how things were. But it does not mean that we all have to fucking accept it. And it's not... And, and quite frankly, it's a good gesture that they are moving forward to at least try to pardon the child. But can you bring this child back to life? Can you bring back the decades of life that he missed out on because of what the state did? Not even a shred of physical evidence proved that this child killed two innocent girls. In fact, there is even quite a lot of evidence that actually disproves that. That it was actually probably most likely an older white gentleman. But no, you turned the other way and were just looking for a reason to kill a black kid. It's despicable. 
it's racist and it's fascist and it shows the inherent nature of the South and its history and what continues to somewhat exist to this day. It's just something that's absolutely despicable. And so, quite frankly, yes, I do hope that the child is pardoned, but it does not make up for the years of torture and sadness that the family had to go through, and it does not make up for the fascists that Southerners are. I'm NorCal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement, and this has been NorCal Corner. Peace. You never really can fix my heart